Good afternoon. My name is Dr. David Shorter. I'm a professor in the Department of World Arts and Cultures and Dance. I'm affiliated with Gender Studies, um, American Indian Studies, and Anthropology. And I'm here to talk to you today about my current project, which is called the Archive of Healing. The Archive of Healing comes on the heels of my previous project, which was the Wiki for Indigenous Languages. In the Wiki for Indigenous Languages, I sought to take primarily oral traditional knowledges and bring them to a digital platform, and then to use those new technologies in order to benefit the companies from which the knowledge came. I think it was because I was interested in those themes that I got a phone call in 2015 saying, David, we've found a database on campus and we think you'd want to look at it. Well, now I have to give you a little bit of history. In 1940, a professor by the name of Dr. Wayland Hand sought out to create the largest collection of medicinal folklore anywhere on the globe. And he created a team of students and colleagues that spent the next 30 years to develop this archive. They went through 3,200 publications. They got the materials from six university archives. They got first-hand and second-hand information from anthropologists working in the field. And they brought that all together to create a database that spans 200 years and seven continents. They had, by 1984, 1,000,000 by 6 physical index cards sitting in a basement somewhere here on this campus. <laughs> when that project was announced, it received applause from the mayor of LA, from Sierra Coop, the Surgeon General, from the director of World Health Organization. It was big news for people inside the soft sciences, particularly in folklore and the humanities, and Dr. Han passed away. That material then went to another professor who had the material digitized only to retire the month that that project was finished. <laughs> you know, if you know anything about the university world, that meant that the actual database got shuffled to an actual server in the basement of the library where it sat until they called me. So when I started looking at this database, I was quite frankly blown away. I was vexed. It wasn't hundreds of data points. It wasn't thousands. It was a hundreds of thousands, 750,000 rows of data taken from around the world about how people have approached healing or curing in their communities. I couldn't help but wrestle with some fairly large questions here. How did we get this data? Who has a right to share the data? But most importantly, who could benefit from the data? Anyone in this room could benefit from the data, quite frankly. But how about the communities where the data came from? Or other communities of need? Those are really difficult questions to answer. And of course, there were 750,000 rows of data to go through, so that's why it's taken me three years to get to this point where today I am for the very first time talking about the Archive of Healing in the public space. The Archive of Healing is not just a peer-to-peer -peer sharing network where you can actually network with other people who are interested in healing or curing, you can actually make comments on the previous data and submit new data. And primarily for the audience here today, it's a database. It's a database with information in which I think the value of that information should go back into benefiting communities of need. So what I'm looking for is really partnerships, both with leaders inside the industry, leaders on campus, community organizations, community members, healers, to start laying the groundwork for those primary relationships in which we can mutually benefit from the data, if the data is worth something. Now, I actually think the data is worth a lot. And I have some figures to help you figure that out with me. If you look at the global consumer market for healthcare, 60% is currently being used on either complementary or what's considered traditional medical approaches. And if you look at the five-year expected growth, that's about 17%. If you look at the two areas that are expected to grow more than anywhere else, it's actually botanical and performative, like yoga or wellness, uh, mindfulness practices. And those are the two primary data types in the archive, plant-based and performative. And it's for that reason that I think, quite frankly, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like the archive of healing. You might be thinking, well, there is WebMD. You're absolutely right. WebMD is a great example of a project that's gone very well. It is primarily allopathic, and it is primarily pharmaceutical, but it's important to note that it sold for $2.7 billion a year and a half ago. You might be thinking more about things like wellness or beauty. I love goop as much as anyone else. <laughs> Um, it's important to know that Goop was valued at $250 million just last year. So when I think about what the Archive of Healing has to offer us, I can't help but think we have an opportunity here 
to not only help people go through the data and figure where the value is in there, but get that value back to communities. I do think people from different communities can share information about knowledge and wellness with each other. And I also think that communities, campuses, and companies can benefit by helping them do so. If you want to join me in that conversation, you can email me at shorter at ucla.edu. Or you can meet me after the presentation today, and I'll actually let you go through the database and put in some words, perhaps your own elements. Thank you so much for listening.